Welcome to the fourth chapter of the React Relay tutorial on how to GraphQL. In this chapter, you're going to learn how you can create new links in the Hacker News application with GraphQL mutations. Exactly like in the previous chapter, you're going to start by preparing the React components that are required for this new functionality. So go ahead and create a new JavaScript file inside the components directory and call it create link. Inside this component, you have to uh, paste the following code. So this component will have a component state where we are storing the input that's provided by the user for the description and the URL. Then we simply render two input fields right here. The first one will take the description that the user can provide for the link. And the second one will take the URL for the link that the user provides. Then we also render this submit button right here. And then we have the, the, the signature already for the create link function that we're going to implement in just a bit. But before you implement it, you actually have to go and create the mutation. <clears throat> but before you can implement this function, you actually have to go and create the mutation that's going to be used. And in Relay, it's good practice to have each mutation written in its own file. So let's go ahead and create But before you can But before you can actually implement this function, you have to go and create the mutation. And in Relay, it's good practice to write each mutation in its own file. So what we're going to do, we're going to add a new directory to the sources directory of our project and we call it mutations. And that's logically is where we're putting all the mutations that we're going to write. In that directory, we're creating a new um, mutation, a new file that is called create link mutation. And in this file, we put the following code. So at first we have some imports on the top of the file again. First, we're importing this commit mutation function, which is used in Relay to send a mutation to the server. And then we also import this GraphQL function again that we already know. Then we're importing the connection handler that we're going to talk about later and the environment because we also need to pass the environment to the commit mutation function uh, when we're calling it. The next thing that we see in this file is the definition of the mutation itself. So we're using again this GraphQL function to tag the GraphQL code that we're writing. And this is just the, the standard create link mutation that we're given by the Relay API, where we have an input object that wraps all the arguments that we can pass when we want to create a new link. So in this case, this is going to be the URL and the description of the link. And then we simply specify the field of the mutation. We are passing the input object and specify the payload of the mutation that we want to have returned by the server when this mutation was performed. Then we're exporting a function, an anonymous, we're exporting actually an anonymous function right here that takes the arguments that we want the caller to provide when they want to create a new link in the backend. So we are accepting the description, the URL, and we're also taking a callback uh, that we can execute once the mutation was performed. Inside this function, we are then going ahead and uh, constructing this input object that's required for the GraphQL mutation. So we are effectively wrapping the description and the URL inside this input object. And this corresponds to the input object that's being passed into the, mut into the mutation right here. And notice that we only include this client mutation ID field because that's currently still a requirement of the GraphQL Relay API. And this was a requirement in Relay Classic, but the client mutation ID field is not required with the new version of Relay, Relay Modern, anymore. So the, 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 the reason we're including it here is just because the Relay API of GraphQL expects it to be there, but it actually has no function in our setup. 
And then finally, we're calling the commit mutation function that we imported above, and we're passing a couple of arguments to it. First and foremost, we're passing the environment so that Relay knows the endpoint where it has to send the mutation to. And then we're just passing the mutation and the variables that we prepared. And then in the uncompleted callback, we're just calling the callback that the caller of this function provides. Let's now go and test if the mutation actually works. So for that, we go back to the create link component and implement the create link method down here. So first, let's go ahead and import the create link mutation that we just wrote. We import it from the mutations directory. And then the way how we implement the create link function down here is by first retrieving the description and the URL from the state. And then we're calling the create link mutation. And what we're calling here in effect is the function that we're exporting. So here we provide exactly this information that's then going to be used inside the commit mutation function. And we're also providing this callback to, to, to indicate in the console that the mutation has completed. Next, in order for us to be able to actually test the mutation, we have to go and render the create link component inside the root component of our app. So instead of rendering the linkless page, we're going to render the create link component. And then there is one last thing that we have to do before we actually run the app, and that is executing the Relay compiler again, because we added some new GraphQL code to the project that has to be compiled. So let's move over to a terminal again and invoke the Relay compiler with the same com command as before. And this is now also going to compile the GraphQL code that's located in the create link mutation. Fantastic. So now we're all set to actually go ahead and test the mutation and run the app. So we're running the application again. And this time, this is going to render the create link component, including the input, the two input fields for the description and the URL. So let's go ahead and create this new link here and click the submit button. Notice that we don't get any visual feedback, so we don't really know if the mutation actually worked or not. But what we can do to validate that is simply to open up a GraphQL playground again and send the all links query to see if the data was added to the database. So if I'm clicking the play button with the current query and also add the des description to the query right here, we see that the new link that I just created is now also returned. So we just validated that the mutation actually worked and the data was stored in the database. This was it for the fourth chapter of the React Relay tutorial of how to GraphQL. In the next chapter, we'll implement some navigation options and talk about routing.